depression. If our lives had no other configuration but this, we should want, and perhaps deserve, to perish. If depression had no termination, then suicide would indeed be the only remedy. But one need not sound the false or inspirational note to stress the truth that depression is not the soul's annihilation. Men and women who have recovered from the disease, and there are countless, bear witness to what is probably its only saving grace. It is conquerable. I uh, return to uh, this fellow frequently, William Styron, um, because he raises so many of the ideas that uh, came up in my mind when I was dealing with my depression 20 plus years ago. Um, the idea that, okay, the only way out of this, if the only way out of this is suicide, then um, I think I probably should commit suicide, if that is the only way out of this. And I think that what instilled the strength in me to carry on was that one sentence, it is conquerable. I kept repeating that to myself. Now I understand that that's sort of a mantra, it's just sort of a deliberate playing with one's emotions, but you understand that that's kind of, it's your emotions that get you into this situation in certain cases of depression, that get you into this in the first place, and you've got to deal with your emotions, with your thought patterns, with everything like uh, of that nature, to get you out of it. But if depression is completely unconquerable, then anyone who's come down with this, the sort that I had that um, made it so bad that um, you find it difficult to walk, and I actually did find it difficult to walk. Um, I, I could walk, of course, but it was uh, as though I had huge weights attached to my feet. Um, then you sort of think, all right, uh, time to check out here. It's um, really time to leave, because if this is going to be the quality of my life forever, and it does look that way when you're in the depths of something that severe, um, then uh, you might as well just um, call it a day. This isn't going anywhere. But of course, I read that line, and that line inspired me on an emotional way, in an emotional way, and um, because Styron had painted so, such an accurate picture of what I was going through, um, that um, I eventually found the strength to, to uh, crawl out of the black hole that I had uh, fallen into. Now, if you ask me, depression is pretty much the distilled essence of harm. Um, take all your murders, your Auschwitzes, your rapes, your uh, disappointments, your mourning, um, uh, torture, everything, all the horrors of harm, distill them to their essence, and what you've got is depression. Um, that's why I place depression, uh, I give depression <laughs> pride of place with antinatalism in the title of these 80 plus videos. The only ultimate objection to life itself that I've ever come up with is depression. Depression is the only thing that um, seems to militate towards suicide if depression was the only uh, reality of life. It isn't the only reality of life, but if it were, then suicide would be the way to go. Um, I found that I was depressed even in my sleep, and if you can believe that, I was mentally sluggish, lethargic, and miserable even in my sleep. Um, everyone's uh, experience with it is different, but um, uh, we all sort of share certain things, and, and one of them is an, inca an incapacity or a, a feeling that you can't really describe what it was like. That's what's led me to the conclusion that all suffering, all harm, all negativity, is not out there in the world. It's not to be solved by not having kids. It's not to be solved by attempting to create a utopia on Earth, because none of that's going to work. It's not going to be solved by abolishing sentience. None of that's going to work. Or even if you do do it, you've still got a few years left to live out your life. If you're not going to kill yourself, and if all you want to do is now is abolish the, uh, the sentience uh, on this planet, which isn't going to happen, realistically speaking, you've still got a truckload of harm right here that you have to deal with. What do you plan to do about that? 
Well, I'll quote um, our friend David Benatar, where he says, he, he spiels off his uh, famous list of um, all the harms of the world, his Pandora's box. We infrequently contemplate the harms that await a new, any newborn child, pain, disappointment, anxiety, grief, and death. Think about those. Pain, disappointment, anxiety, grief, and death. Um, well, how many of those take place out there in the world, and how many of them take place here? Well, pain is a thing of the central nervous system. The central nervous system is here. Um, disappointment, anxiety, grief, and death. Well, disappointment, anxiety, and grief are definitely uh, taking place here. That's where they all have to be fought. Death, well, <laughs> that's pretty much inevitable. And uh, that is a little bit beyond the scope of this video. But what I'm uh, referring to here is the harm that takes place while we are alive. I would say all of it takes place between the ears. It all takes place in our minds, in our consciousness, in our brains, our central nervous system, however you care to define uh, that state of what's going on in the head. In the head. All the suffering takes place in there. That's where depression's suffering takes place. Um, depression, as I said, was the ultimate challenge to life. But depression can be overcome. I'm living proof of that. It can be overcome. Um, one ends up sounding horrifically and unacceptably arrogant to people to say, I'm a survivor, you're in the midst of it, and um, look at me, uh, see how happy I am with everything. Um, it's an insult. It angers people when you say that. Um, and, uh, well, it angers people who are drowning in the sea of depression. But just because someone is angered by it doesn't mean that it's less valid. The, uh, the harms that are caused in this plane of existence are undeniable in life. But um, the recognition of them is nothing new. Um, the Buddha, in his first noble truth, said, What is the noble truth of suffering? Birth is suffering, aging is suffering, and sorrow and lamentation, pain, grief, and despair are suffering. Well, all of these things are uh, things of the mind. And then the Buddha went on to teach exactly how one is to cope with and overcome these things. You don't have to actually get one of those uh, statues I've got behind me and meditate thinking about it. You don't have to call yourself a Buddhist. You don't have to call, you, call yourself an anythingist to attack the idea of suffering, to attack the idea of harm, to attack the idea of pain, of um, evil even, of um, any sort of negativity, anything that gives you the sense of being bad, of being harmful. That stuff can be dealt with. There's just too much evidence uh, that uh, it can be dealt with that way to ignore. People are inclined to say that, you know, you're just um, tricking yourself into ignoring all the evil in the world. And I would say, no, you're not. You're coming to terms with it. You're looking at it head on and saying, all right, what are you, Mr. Harm? What are you? What is it that makes me so afraid of you? I want to understand what you are. I want to know everything about you. I want to come to terms with you and accept you for what you are. Whereas the Benatarian school runs from harm, uh, runs towards annihilation, towards suicide, towards... Um, any number of other uh, ways of simply blotting it out and refusing to face it. As I say, um, the antinatalist plan of um, ending all sentience is not going to happen, realistically speaking, in our lifetime. If you're going to commit suicide, then go ahead and do it. 
get be done with it. If that's your conclusion, if that's your way of dealing with depression or with the um, the way the world is, then by all means, swallow that pill, whatever your means are of ending your days. Do it. You've really got no other choice if you're dealing with something that is, by definition, unendurable. If you don't avail yourself of this option, you've got a few more years ahead of you of suffering. If suffering has value, if harm has value, if harm is the central value of our existence, doesn't it make sense to try and come to terms with it, to overcome it, to deal with it, to cope with it in some way or other, rather than running from it? Um, doesn't it make sense to actually devote one's energies in uh, in that direction, to devote one's energies towards coming to terms with it or overcoming it? I would say that it's, it is quite insane to say that harm is the only thing that has value, or harm has that harm is the central value of our existence, and then not attempting to come to terms with it. There's something inherently masochistic about that. And there is something inherently masochistic, strongly masochistic, overwhelmingly masochistic, in depression. Thank you.